Well, hi there. Previously in our video, Finding Marilyn, a big change coming from Pixar, we discussed the fundamental difference between males and females. And it probably wasn't what you'd think. It is the size of their gametes. Females produce large gametes called eggs, and males produce small gametes called sperm. The benefit to large gametes is that they're good at surviving. The benefit to small gametes is that they're good at finding other gametes, since there are a lot of them. And this is important because gametes need to find a friend. They only contain half of the number of chromosomes generally needed by an organism. But what determines which individuals will be male, produce small gametes, and which individuals will be female, produce large gametes? Well, that can depend. In humans, it depends on our chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes. Males, on the other hand, have only one X and one Y chromosome. And that Y chromosome, which is much smaller than the X chromosome, codes for a cascade of hormones that cause a developing human to develop male sexual and secondary sexual characteristics. But that isn't the way that it works in all animals. Birds and many other reptiles, for example, are ZW. ZW is very similar to XY, except it is the female and not the male that has two different chromosomes. Males are ZZ and females are ZW. Thus it depends on the egg which sex the offspring will have and not on the sperm as with humans. If meiosis produces an egg with a Z, the offspring will be male. If it produces an egg with a W, the offspring will be female because they're guaranteed to get a Z from the sperm. Some moths have something similar, but a bit crazier. In these moths, males have two Z chromosomes, just like what we just mentioned, but females only have one Z chromosome, and then they don't have a second sex chromosome. They're referred to as Z0 or ZO. And most arachnids, as well as many insects and even some mammals, are XO, where females are XX, and the males are the ones with only one X and that lack a second sex chromosome. But you could take this to an entirely other level, like they do in most hymenopteran insects, like bees, ants, and wasps. This is one of my favorite things in all of nature because it largely explains why many of these animals are eusocial, having a queen where most individuals do not reproduce at all. In these animals, females are XX, diploid individuals, but males, well, they only have half of a genome. They develop from unfertilized eggs and are haploid. This system is called haplodiploidy, and it's stinking rad. But it's not even the weirdest one, not by far. The platypus had to boast a total of 10 sex-determining chromosomes. One or two? Not enough to impress a platypus. But then, there are animals that don't use chromosomes at all. As we discussed before, some animals are both male and female at the same time, or at different times in their lives. And turtles, crocodilians, other reptiles, and other fish have their sex determined by the temperature at which the eggs incubate. And yes, I said other fish. During development, the eggs pass through a short period of time called the thermosensitive or temperature sensitive period. And the temperature experienced during this period irreversibly determines the sex of the developing embryos. And there are multiple patterns of this temperature dependent sex determination, TTSD, that we tend to observe. One is that males emerge if the eggs are cooler at the thermosensitive period, and females if the eggs are warmer. This is very common in turtles. The opposite is observed in tuataras, where females hatch when the eggs are cooler at the thermosensitive period, and males if the eggs are warmer. But we also see a pattern where females hatch at very low and very high temperatures, and males only in between. This is common in crocodilians, some turtles, and some lizards. And then there are some lizards, like bearded dragons, that have both chromosomal and temperature-determined sex determination, because nothing should be as straightforward as it could be. And now you know. If you learned something today, please like this video. If you'd like to learn more in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. And we hope to see you real soon.